for coming, 4 p.m. Hopefully we don't put you to sleep. We are here today to talk about drag and drop content management in Drupal. So we have for our DAG plan, we'll do some introductions. We'll talk about government uses in Drupal, design systems, component-based designs, um, introducing DUSWDS, and we'll do a demo for you uh, and some Q&A. So my name's Ashley Burns. I'm an account manager at Promet Source. Um, I've been there for about six years. I've been doing account management for over 15. Um, I've been CPAC certified with the IAAP for the last five years. Um, I'm also, I do some marketing for the Alley Talks group. Um, with me today is Rod Martin. Uh, he, he needs no introduction. I think his uh, credentials speak for himself. Many, many, many folks in the Drupal community know, know Rod. He's been training for over 13 years. I think uh, we quantified it for him. And he's trained over 50,000 people, and that's conservative. So it's probably closer to 60,000. Uh, I did some quick math last night, which you know, comes out to about 3,800 folks a year over the last 13 years, and that's impressive. Uh, so happy to have Rod here with me today for our demo. And moving on into Drupal, right? Why we're all here, we're talking about uh, Drupal at a government summit. 56% uh, of government websites run on Drupal. Probably not a shock to you all. Um, over 70% of the I Ivy League universities are in Drupal, and over half of the Fortune 500 companies. And I think many of you know that, um, the reasons being is that it's scalable. It's marketing driven, and it's omni-channel. It's cross-channel, right? It comes with many, many features and, and right out of the box. Um, it means it's a faster time to market uh, because the integrations that you need are already there. And when Drupal is integrated with their design systems, it means that content editors, site builders uh, can create beautiful and accessible landing pages without the need of a developer. And that brings us to what we're talking about today. So we are going to show you uh, how to create a consistent experience across using branded design, reusable blocks, and a branded experience from start to finish. Uh, so we're going to introduce you to something that you've probably heard of. Uh, many of you are familiar with USWDS, uh, and what we're talking about is DUSWDS. And what's D stand for? Drupal, of course. So what is WDS? A ready-to-use distro that includes most all the popular components that you're using today right in Drupal. Uh, it's a ready-to-use distribution. It aligns with the US web design system. Uh, again, it includes all the most popular components, and this part is important that it's mostly open, or it is all open source. It is mostly core and contributed modules. It uses a drag and drop interface uh, and lay layout builder to create attractive, accessible, and user-friendly landing pages. Some of the key benefits, right? It's easy to use for non-technical folks. Flexible. Accessible. And again, ready to use right out of the box. So we're talking about drag and drop, customizable components, that responsive design, ready to go. And so there's some alignment that, we're, um, that we've achieved, the level one maturity model. Uh, so that, what that means is that um, we are aligned with the goals and the attributes of the USWDS. We integrate with those design principles. And then we also follow the user experience guidance of the USWDS. And then this third, uh, the third level, level three maturity model, um, we are not there yet, but it, we are very much aligned and we, are, we have that on the roadmap, right? Uh, so if any of you folks here from federal agencies would like to sponsor that, come talk to me. You know, I'll be here at all conference. Um, but yes, I, we know you're very familiar with the USWDS-based theme. Um, and so yeah, it's ready to go, ready to use. So you'd have a really great comfort level with everything we're about to show you today. Uh, so a few things about it. Um, create once, publish everywhere. 
pre-built reusable components. And again, ready to use, ships accessible, right out of the box. And those are all the things that Rod is about to show you. USWDS, all right. So a quick distinction that Ashley made that I just want to reiterate. Uh, this system, DUSWDS, is not uh, based or built on the US uh, WDS system yet. It will be, uh, sorry, I gotta get to the right page. There we are, all right. It will be uh, when we reach, reach that level three maturity that Ashley talked about. So I don't know if you've ever actually looked at the documentation for, the, uh, for USWDS. It's, it's actually really, really amazing. But there's three levels of maturity. The first level of maturity is where we listen and actually respond to our customers, right? The second level is where we align ourselves with their needs, with accessibility, and with the basic components that make up USWDS. What we're about to show you is aligned to that level. Uh, what it isn't yet is using the actual USWDS base theme. It's using Barrio, which of course we know is Bootstrap 5, uh, but as far as the alignment with the philosophy, the components, and all of those things, it really is aligned, and it's on the roadmap to switch out four federal government websites to using USWDS. We really believe that that's a big part of the future uh, for all federal government sites. So again, if you were here, were you, who was with me this morning? Okay, so about half of you. What I did this morning, as you know, is site builder friendly, I would call it, you know, it's great for us site builders who don't want to get into code. This is the other end of the spectrum. This would be on the level of uh, Site Studio, um, A10's uh, uh, product, Media Current's product, um, DXPR, the site builder that they put out. And there's a lot of work around site builders about, pardon me, about page building in Drupal because, let's face it, right, it's the biggest weakness in Drupal. So what this product does <clears throat> is it builds on the principles of USWDS and adds that page building element to it. It's drag and drop. So hopefully, you know, this wasn't um, a bait and switch on you as far as the description goes because we are talking about drag and drop editors. Uh, we're talking about things like Site Studio, totally proprietary, locked in and can't get out of it. Uh, if you wanted to. Uh, things like DXPR is a paid service that you pay, I think, $30 a month per user. Uh, that I might be wrong on that. They may have changed their pricing model. Uh, but there's a lot of activity in this area. And of course, the elephant in the room when we start to talk about page builders is what? Starshot. How long is this going to be relevant? And should we even think about investing in this now, given that Starshot is coming? Um, and I'm going to try and make a case to you, at least in the here and now and in the short term, that I still think it's worth investing in some kind of page layout tool, waiting for Starshot when it comes. Because let's face it, Starshot's going to require you to start with a new site. I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to implement Experience Builder on an established site. They, they haven't figured that out yet. They're not even talking about that yet. And so we don't know what that future is going to be. But if you're like me, and I mentioned this this morning, <laughs> I'm building sites right now, not 18 months from now. Well, hopefully I'll still be building sites 18 months from now. But, but right now I've got 30 sites that I'm building right now, moving them from a, another CMS into Drupal, and I need something that works. So <clears throat> if I was a federal government agency, this would be something I'd actually take a look at. So you can look at this site, it's public, it's duswds.com, and uh, I'm going to demo it, uh, a few things that, from the page builder as we go. We're going to have lots of time for questions, and so uh, feel free to, you know, you can ask questions as we go. I'll repeat your question for the video, and of course, we'll, then we'll answer them. Now, I, let me give you a caveat on this site. Parts of this site are ripped right off of uswds.com. I want to be honest with you. In building this site for the GovCon, um, we, we were a little bit under the gun, so we just copied and pasted some of the content. I'll be honest, and I'll show that to you when we get there. Because you're going to look at it and go, that looks really familiar to me. Yes, it should, actually. It will. However, this is the home page, uh, or the front page, as we know. 
and we have a layout tab. So let me start with this. DUSWDS is built on layout builder, contributed modules, and components with custom block types that the components drive and format and style. So again, if you were with me this morning, uh, we stopped at styling custom block types. This goes to the next level and uses compo uh, components to style and manage all of those custom block types. By doing so, it's incredibly efficient and easy to manage, easy to change. Uh, it's not something site builders can do, but certainly a developer can go in and make any updates they want. And so some of the things you're going to see are like, well, a hero banner or a custom block of just a basic block or how about a headline or a line. We've got block types for all of those things. So this, again, site is built uh, specifically uh, and let me just actually go back to the front page here. <clears throat> Specifically, just to show off that this system can very closely mimic what, DUS, uh, what USWDS does. If I head over here to uh, components, one of the parts of this system uh, is that basically all of the major components that USWDS supports are already built for you. The most important ones, accordions, alerts, banners, body text, buttons, uh, button groups, statistics by the numbers, all of these are already built. Cards, carousels, checkboxes and radios, call to actions, um, date picker, file listings, grids, hero banner, um, and uh, listings, and other things like that. Some of them are not. Navigation, process list, uh, pull quote or block quote, that is actually in there, range slider, and some of these additional components that honestly are just not the most popular ones, right? They're not as used as much. Now, you may use them because of your use case scenario, but what we did is took the most important ones, the most popular ones, and made sure that they were inside of uh, DUSWDS, and, um, and they work incredibly well. So as you can see, again, the typography, that's, that's built in. Validation currently is not. But you can see that all of these components, the main ones, uh, as I'll show you, are already there and ready to go. <clears throat> On the template front, uh, again, this is straight, ripped straight off of uh, USWDS, being 100% honest here. Uh, all of this is built on our platform, though. So literally this vertical tab system you're seeing on the left-hand side, built in, uh, ready to go, and I'll demonstrate that as well for you. I know I sound like a salesperson right now. Please forgive me. I'm not trying to sell you something. Right now this is open source. You can get it. Uh, there will be a paid version eventually. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to help you see a pretty neat product, of which there are several in the Drupal world and space, as you know, and I've already highlighted some of those. So if you feel pressured as a sales guy right now, please, I'm a trainer, not a salesman. I suck at sales. Just ask my wife. It's like, honey, can't you make more money? No, I can't. I'm terrible at sales. So I'm here as a trainer and a presenter today, and I hope that that comes across. So let me dive into a page, and then we'll take a look at the layout. I've created a page called <clears throat> Rod's Demo Page. That's pretty fitting. And I've included the head banner, and I'll show you why in just a moment. There's a banner component on this page. These are three cards in a three-column layout. A uh, up-to-date news, their current news item here in a list, plus an FAQ on the right. Um, again, I've used news as the consistent theme through here. Another automatically generated listing of news with a different layout from cards. And again, even another one with the image in the background, a stack group, and again, lots more. So as I click on layout, <clears throat> you're going to find that this looks a lot like Layout Builder because that's exactly what it is. It's Layout Builder with uh, core and contributed modules, custom block types, and custom components. We have add this template to the library. So we have a section library built in where you can add entire pages to a library or indeed individual sections for quick 
uh, inserting, as we actually demonstrated this morning as well. We also have section move uh, module, which allows you to literally click a button and move a section up or down. Uh, and uh, not drag and drop, there isn't a module that does that in Drupal yet, but literally clicking a button to move them up and down. As well, they've done a lot of styling around all of the buttons that are typical in Layout Builder to make them just a little bit more appealing. You can add a section or import from the library, as I mentioned. We'll demonstrate that in just a moment. Whenever you add a section in Layout Builder, you add blocks. This uses Bootstrap, as you know, as does USWDS. So when I add a section, I get Bootstrap one column, two column, two column with header, three column, three column with header, four column, and four column with header. These all come with the typical Bootstrap scenario, styling. Whether it's boxed, full, or edge to edge, by the way, I never use full. I don't even know what it does. I've tried it. I can't tell the difference. If anyone knows, feel free to let me know. I use boxed with gutters or edge to edge with no gutters if I want a full width layout. With Bootstrap, you have the ability to have background colors, images, or videos. And this one is locked down. Remember the Layout Builder restrictions if you were with me this morning. This is restricted to only background and spacing. All of the other features have been disabled on this site, but of course, click a button and they're re-enabled. Spacing allows you to add padding or margins around a section. And when you have a section just like this, you can also name it, as well as add custom wrapper classes, which of course you need to write the CSS for, um, and custom wrapper attributes. You can also set classes for the rows and classes for the columns. If indeed you have more than one, you can do that as well. The CSS needs to be written for that, but you can insert the classes here. This does not use Layout Builder styles. Um, they chose specifically to not use that and just leave it here in the back end. So if I go ahead and click Add Section, we have a brand new section at the top, and now we have an Add Block button, very exactly like Layout Builder. From on the right-hand side, once again, you have Configure Section 1, takes me back to the previous little layout, add this section to the library once I have it configured, uh, clone it or copy it, and then, of course, get rid of it. Let me show you the components that are built in to DUSWDS. They are the heading, button. I'm not sure how well you can see that. Let me see if I can blow that up just a little bit for you. There we go. Heading, button, basic text, media, divider line, banner, card, testimonial, and CTA. And if I could mention, the card component is a multi-use, multi-functional component. I'll show it to you in a minute. List, files list, accordion, FAQ group, person list, photo gallery, tabs group. Group automatic is one of my favorite. It takes whatever content you've got and automatically grabs the latest three and formats it for you. No views, although you can use views, no views necessary. A stat group, slideshow, web form, assuming you have web form installed. And then some pre-configured lists, um, upcoming events, this uh, can be built around any kind of views that you already have. They can be added really, really simply. And of course, the add to any share buttons is the social button of choice. Adding a block is literally as simple as clicking add block and then choosing one, like a heading. Each block type is pre-configured with particular elements, uh, fields and things like that. This one has a title and a heading level, simple as that. And I'll leave it at an H2. I can align it center, left, and right, and I can even add a cute decorative line. Click Add Block, and well, there we go. I now have a heading block. And it's, I've blown the screen up, so let me, there we go. That's a little bit easier. There's my heading. I can align it left, center, or right, just with a click of a button. One of the best parts of this kind of a system is that once it's configured, for your website, content editors can use it without fear of messing up your um, style. Your style guide is important. We don't want people using Comic Sans Serif now, do we? Guys, I actually, I'm not lying to you. I had a client actually send me a document using Comic Sans Serif 
a week ago and said, this is what I want. And I said, no. <laughs> Flat out, I just said, no, we are not doing that. And after a brief discussion in which I was kind but firm, we chose a better font. <laughs> I couldn't. Hello. I know. I mean, this is 2024, not 1996, right? Unbelievable. So, no Comic Sans Serif allowed here. We're all good. You can add multiple blocks in a section. So if I like, uh, if I want to continue with this one column section, I can click add a block and I can add any block type I want. Let's say we're going to add a card here. This card will be full width because that's the width of the section. So let me just give it a title. This is my card. And let me just grab some lip, some text here. I prefer Cupcake Ipsum or Star Trek Ipsum, but, you know, Lorem Ipsum will be good for now. Of course, you've got the full WYSIWYG editor here in the body field like you would expect, inserting media, bolding text, inserting links, and all of that. You also have basic HTML, full HTML, however you want to configure your text editors, you've got that built in. I can add a media item here, and I'm just going to grab good old Abe Lincoln. I can add a button into this, and I can use any kind of icon class. Now, the icon class doesn't work on this site because we haven't connected it to Font Awesome, but I can also select a style, default button, primary button, etc., and you can add more than one. A header would show up at the top, and I'm going to leave the display at default for just a moment. And so here's your first card. A nice big image, nicely formatted text, gray background by default, and a button that is pre-formatted to the primary color uh, of this particular site. Now, this card is the same as these three cards. These three cards are in a three column layout, and I just added three blocks, uh, a block in each column. Now, if I come along and click on any of these and click configure, I can, of course, change the styling of the display to image left or image circle. And boom, without any work on my part, a content editor can come along and again, according to your style guide, go ahead and change the layout of this block anytime you want. By the way, these are completely drag and droppable. Oops. And as soon as you do that in a live demo, you are totally, totally screwed. So let me turn off for a minute content preview and see if I can go get that back. Uh, where did it go? There it goes. Uh, control Z or undo? Um, that's a great question. I don't think it does. I don't think anything in the Layout Builder does that, to be honest. Um, there is no undo in Layout Builder of, of any of them. Uh, there might be in Site Studio. I think there might be in Site Studio. Uh, yeah, you can do revisions. Yeah, so if I had clicked save or, un or I could go back to a previous version. Yeah, no, I totally wrecked that. Um, <laughs> oh, I love live demos. Let me see if I can... Anyway, you get the idea. Um, there, yeah, I don't think there is an undo. No, there is certainly not. All right. Typically, why, what I would do in this case is just turn off the preview and go look for it and drag it back up. Um, and I don't know why I can't get at it here. Typically, I can. So I'm not sure what I've done, but I've done something. So not to worry. Um, here's a two-column section layout where I've added a automatic block of three of the latest news items. So this is not a card, per se. This is a block, auto, a group automatic. What a group automatic will do is allow you to go into your content, whether, again, bootstrap, site alert, blog, event, FAQ, or whatever your content types are, say, in this case, the three latest news items, 
and display them in any way you want. Again, that's really small. Let me see if I can blow it up. A carousel, obviously. You can have a carousel of multiple items and they'll come across the screen clicking the arrow. Not my favorite at all. Four card featured is really cool. It will display the latest, ver uh, the latest news item in a large block on the left hand side and three news items on a right hand side with the title, the image, and a read more. The column row allows you to insert them in a column, so a long two or three list column. Grid two, three, and four, exactly what it sounds like. A three column grid, a two column grid, or a four column grid, again, automatically formatted for you. Now where this gets really stupid is if you, and I've done this, uh, you make a three column section and then have a three column grid in the left hand column of your sec, it looks terrible, just don't do it. I'm just letting you know. I'm saving you a ton of pain right now. But again, you can if you really, really want to be silly. The item displays default, you've already seen, the image at the top, the title, and the body. But you've got a card tall, which will make the image very tall. Image background places the image in the background of the block. Circle, we just looked at, it makes a cute little circle out of the picture. Image left and image right, exactly what it sounds like. Basic, basic plus an icon left, uh, basically get rid of the image and we'll put uh, the image and, or sorry, the body and a button. Or in this, if you had the icon left, it would be the body and an icon that you've chosen. So you've got a lot of flexibility with this card component and a lot of gone built into it. This is the automatic one. You also have a manual card component that does exactly the same thing where you manually add the content on the fly that you want to put in the cards. One of the best things about uh, DUSWDS is you can use it for your content types as well as your landing pages because it still has access to all of the fields that you might want to place somewhere. Fre <laughs> I really messed that up. Hang on one second. Thank you for reminding me about revisions. Is it Drupal great? I love Drupal. All right. Let's see if it's still met. No, it's still messed up. I didn't go far enough back. Let me try one more time. I'm so sorry. Let's see, 1223, we'll do that one. There we go, all right. Don't you love live demos? Anything can happen, folks, anything. No, it's still doing that for me. Oh, I have to save it, that's why, probably. Okay, I'm going to give up. FAQs, frequently asked questions block type, is exactly what it sounds like. It creates an FAQ group. By the way, all of these are reusable. Everything you add on the fly is stored under uh, layout builder reusable components, and you can reuse any of these elements over. So I've got an FAQ group title and a group description, and then you can add your frequently asked questions, and they appear as an accordion style on the page. You can add as many as you want. You can reorder them simply by clicking, dragging, and dropping, and clicking update. And there's your FAQs, good to go. This is the, uh, this is the news automatic block with the image on the left. Again, nicely formatted. I would probably go with a two column layout here, maybe not a three column layout, it's a little squished. But again, I just wanted to throw some things out up on the screen for you to see. Uh, the flexibility of it. The stat group is really cool. Uh, again, you can have up to four, column, four columns wide here with the stat group. Again, all pre-configured for you to go. I'm going to click add block one more time. There are testimonials, call to action buttons, uh, uh, literally just accordion lists, person lists. Uh, the tabs are, again, uh, the ability to create vertical or horizontal tabs. I'm going to add one of those. We'll keep it at, we're going to change it to vertical, and I'm just going to call this 
tab group one, and then you add the tabs. And your tabs can literally be a text box, a button, card, divider line, any of your basic components built in here. I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple, add a new content block, and add some content. Once again, I've got full access to the WYSIWYG editor. So that's tab group one. I'm gonna create the tab item, and I'm gonna create another new tab. You can see how easy it would be for a content editor to just actually pull these in. So if on this next tab I wanted the latest news, I could do a group automatic. Or I could do an image. Let's grab media, add new content block, add media, and grab an image. Or a video. Give it some alt text. And once again, you have full access to your image styles, which are based on focal point, scale, and crop, which, as we all know, is pretty much a necessity these days. The ability to set the focal point and have image styles uh, that are, again, completely locked down by the site builder, but usable by the content editor. And all of those are pre-built. Add block. And there's your tabs. Again, styled to your style guide once you've uh, added all of that functionality in. I could go on and on and, and show you more. Uh, I've got another website here where I took um, the TSA and made it the MSA, because it's a, we call it our Meridian demo site. So if any of you are with the TSA, please forgive me. I was actually doing a training, and I had, two, I had three, two TSA guys in my training. And this is before I became an American citizen. Real quick story. And I was on a, uh, I was on a list. When I flew back into the country, I went to immigration for an hour. Any of you immigrants besides me? OK, cool. Well, you might know. You might have experienced this. You go to the immigration office for an hour. They don't talk to you. They don't tell you anything. You're sitting there for an hour feeling stupid. They finally come back and say, you're good to go, Mr. Martin. I said, what's the problem? We can't tell you. OK. So I asked these two TSA guys. I said, guys, here's my experience every time I fly back into the US. And they started laughing. I wasn't very happy at that point. They started laughing. And I said, so what's the deal? Well, you're on a list. I said, what list? Oh, we don't know. I said, OK, so can I get off the list? And they said, oh, no. I said, so you mean I got to do this every time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you enjoy that now. So what should I do? Schedule more time between flights. I'm an American citizen now. The first time I flew back into the States after that happened, it was welcome home, which was really nice. I didn't have to wait for an hour. So MSA, here you go. A banner. This is your header banner with some text, with some padding around it, and the white is automatic. This is a three-column card layout. Again, this one has some added buttons because you can add more than one button. This is the standard card layout. Again, these are not, uh, this is the, not the card automatic. This is the card custom block type where I built these three blocks like that. Here's a, a simple accordion, just like that. And then again, three more cards, a vertical tab, and a full width video of this lady who is obviously, you know, screening somebody who is like me and wasn't allowed back into the country for an hour. Bottom line, what we're trying to express to you today is a couple of things. Number one, uh, there are options in the page building experience in Drupal. Uh, Acquia and Site Studio is a fantastic option if you're an Acquia customer and don't mind being locked in. Uh, DXPR is a great option as well. We think DUSWDS is going to be really helpful sp specifically for the federal government for a number of reasons. One, there's no vendor lock-in. Yes, it's a distribution, and I know we sometimes don't like distributions, but it is, it's a distribution that is out of the box ready and completely aligned with what you need to be aligned with in a federal government website. 
When we get to level three maturity and we're using the USWDS as a base theme, you're not going to see any change because the current system is built exactly the way USWDS is built. And so we're pretty excited about it, uh, what's, what's potentially there for federal government agencies. Um, and so let me stop and ask to come on back up. Any questions that we can answer for you? I hope I haven't been as clear as mud. I hope I've been a little bit better than that. And I hope it didn't sound too salesy, but it probably did, and I'm really sorry. Uh, questions. Well, questions first. Any questions? And if it did, you can blame me for that. Yeah, she's the salesperson. I'm the trainer. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful design on the uh, admin interface. That's inspirational. Yeah. Thank you for that. You're welcome. The problem of components and layout. Um, I guess let me walk through it like this. As far as Twig is concerned, you've got the, the component side of things and the Drupal template side of things. Yep. And of course, the Drupal templates can pull in the component, right? Yep. Um, and I've heard that it can be problematic thinking through. Let's say you have a card with three arguments, the title, the body, and call to action. Um, in Drupal, those are fields. In Drupal, you have field override templates, but if you're pulling in your card component with right. those three arguments, how are you dealing with that in this theme, yep. and what is your opinion on, about that kind of general? Okay, so the question, just for the audience, the question is, how do we deal with component conflict versus themes? How do we feel about components in general? Uh, how we're using it right now? So we are not using single directory components because this product has actually been around for a while. We've changed it to focus on the federal government specifically with this version of it. And so we are not using single directory components yet. Uh, components in Layout Builder over will, will ignore template overrides unless you're overriding the content array in your template override. We actually talked a little bit about this this morning. A template override will take the content array, and if you comment that out and then target individual fields, well, then none of this works. It all goes away, because this is all based on the content array in the content type. There is no template override here. The components are drawn in by Layout Builder and the custom block types that we've created. So custom block types that we've been, been building pull in the component, the component determines the layout of that block type with the fields and the options that you saw on the screen. The template just renders that out as part of the content array. So again, if you go ahead and use template overrides, yeah, you're blowing this away. It, it, they don't work together. So hopefully that answers. Is that OK? Super, thanks. Any other questions? I don't know if I, I think I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so when you're building a card, you select, you know, the style of the card, whether that's the basic style, the, the, um, the full style, the image on the left, the image on the right, um, and you also select the, yeah, they're, they're button, they're not multi-selects. Um, so each individual card here has its own settings, um, and you can't combine those, you can't mix and match those, they're, they're, Radio buttons, not check boxes, right? Uh, so again, if I click, um, whoops, I'm not on layout here. Let me go back to the other page here, just a minute. Yeah, so if I click on this one here, for instance, this is a card layout in a column row. I can't combine a column row with a three column grid because they're two totally separate layouts. Uh, similarly, the item display, again, defines the and this is part of the component system, that defines the layout of that card. You can mix and match cards in a section, but you can't mix and match options for a card. Um, so, yeah. Now, one thing I didn't demonstrate, let me just do that real quickly, because it's really, really cool. Let me come up here to this section and import, uh, add this section to the library. Whoops. Import. No, it's over here. Sorry. Add to library. And 
if I go ahead and save that, now I can import that anywhere just by coming import from library and I'm going to pick this vertical tab one that I had created earlier. And there it is. Now again, I just brought it into a, the same section with a whole bunch of other stuff, so I've made a mess. Typically, you'd create a new section there. And honestly, in production, that would not happen. Uh, this, is a, <laughs> this is a site we threw together pretty quickly. So in production, it's much, much more stable than that. Live sorry. Demos. Yeah, sorry about that. Love live demos. Yeah? Does this theme offer a starter kit? Uh, no, it's a custom theme. Based on of based on Barrio, so we got Barrio as your base theme. It's a custom pro, uh, theme built for this particular uh, element. But again, it's all open source. You can do anything you want with it. Yeah, nothing's locked down here. This is all open source, core contributed, and a, again, a custom theme. But again, once this goes to level three maturity, USWDS will be the base theme, and that custom theme will be built on top of USWDS. But you won't notice the difference. They're virtually the same at this point. Yep. Are you using the same theme for the admin? The same theme for the admin. The theme, the admin theme is Jin. The Jin theme, which is very popular, gaining popularity. I, you know, I think we're going to see that theme really, really take over. I use it on my personal blog because I love having the save buttons at the top. For no other reason, I love the Jin theme. The save button's at the top and they persist as you go down the page. Oh, worth the price of admission right there. Yeah? I want to like the customizations to, for example, the move up and down section. Yes. That's a module. Is there a gen theming? Thing? So that's, that's just plain CSS. Uh, I think. I, I don't know. They, they may have. I, I don't know the answer to Sorry. The question was the up and down buttons here. Uh, how is that done? That actually might be a custom component, a component that's built in, um, because that's a, a contributed module that does this, but they've styled it with, the, um, with some JavaScript there, and I'm pretty sure that's in a custom component. Again, totally open, though. Yes, sir? You need to duplicate an entire page. Yes, you can. So if you come up here to the top and say, add this template to the library, and I give it a label, rods, mess, add template. I'm not going to grab an image. I could. And I, and I go to um, add content landing page. Rods, mess, exclude the title. This is the gin theme. Our save buttons are at the top. Save, layout. And um, import from library. And where's Rod's mess? There it is, Rod's mess with no image. And there it is. So my, in practice, what I do for cli my clients is I will build a set of these landing pages, save them to the library, and then marketers can come along very quickly and boom. Now, when you reconfigure this page, change the image, change the text. You're not overriding the library. The library is set. You're just importing the library and then overriding each of the blocks as you need. It's really slick. Saves so much time. Yeah. And that's built in. Yes? Yeah. The question is, if I'm sorry, can you say it again? No. The question is, <laughs> if you delete a block from this page, which I've just imported, will it delete it from the library? No. Uh, again, the library is a static, saved element now. That block will still be there. Uh, the only way around that would be to resave, save the new one. If you if you wanted to get rid of that block forever, save the new one, delete the old one. The old, uh, del so when you come over to content overview and layout builder library, there's all of the, pr those are all of the saved sections and the saved pages. You can see Rod's mess doesn't have an image up here. You can't, you can edit, all you can do here is edit the name. You can't really edit the template here. 
So if I don't like the template anymore, I need the template to change, I'd import it, change it, resave it, and maybe delete the old one or rename the old one. Yeah. Great questions. I appreciate this. This is super. Yeah. Oh, that's a great question. Thanks. Well, the question is, when USWDS is updated, how do you update this? Well, the updates, again, will be just like any other update to um, a distribution in Drupal. So a base theme that gets an update will get the update. If the update to USWDS impacts the custom theme on top of it, uh, then you know you've got you might have a little bit of work to do. We don't anticipate that happening because it's pretty rare that a base theme update will really mess with your custom theme if you built it correctly. Um, but again, that's a little bit right now. I'll be really honest. We need to wait and see on that. We're not a hundred percent sure on how that's going to work. So yeah. What was that? Oh, okay. Yes. Um, we're over time. So last question, if that's okay. You're based on Mario, which is Bootstrap. Yes. And you're making the transition to USWDS. Will you be keeping Mario? Or no. Will you be based on Mario? It'll, it'll be based on USWD. As the question is, when we when we do make that transition to maturity level three, what's going to happen to Mario as a base theme? It's going to go away. USWDS will be the base theme. Uh, but again, you shouldn't see any change because they're pretty similar. USWDS brings a lot of um, additional elements, like the components. Those components are already built, and they mesh perfectly together already. So you won't see a change visually. The code will change, but visually you should not see a change once that happens. And you'll be able, you should be able to update the distribution, uh, but when that happens, we'll make a way, I believe we're gonna make a way of doing that, so. All right. Folks, thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Appreciate it.